The Dr. Susan Love Research Foundation is a nonprofit organization focused on accelerating and doing research on the human breast. We have an army of women uh, who are willing to participate in research. We have, um, we apply for grants, we get collaborators, and we study a variety of different aspects of the human breast. We don't do anything on animals because we really want to understand the human breast and the experience of women who have breast cancer. So a couple of our research projects that are really interesting right now is we're trying to map the breast ducts because nobody's ever mapped where the breast ducts are in a human breast. That's because most of the research is done on rats and mice, and they only have one duct per teat, per nipple, whereas we have probably about six to eight. Now, if we had a map, it would be really important because breast cancer starts in a one milk duct. So if you knew where that was, you could focus your surgery better, or maybe you could even squirt something down the duct and clean it out. So the project we've come up with is to take women who are breastfeeding, because then they have milk in their ducts, and then you can see them. And then we do whole breast 3D ultrasound. So this is the whole breast at once, so then you can see where these ducts are. And we've done about 10 women at so far, and some of them are, have young babies, some of them have babies that are nine months old or 12 months old. And in addition, we told them to come with their breasts full and then bring their baby and then empty it out and do it again empty so we could compare. Already, we found some interesting things. First of all, not all the ducks have milk in them. I had always been taught that all your ducks are making milk, but it turns out that no, the duct that's most commonly has milk in it is the lower outer duct. Now, Ashley Cooper back in the 1800s said that was so the baby's head would lean against it and squish the milk out. I don't know if that's really true, but could be. The last duct to be used seems to be the upper outer duct, and the upper outer duct is also the one that gets the most cancer. So it could be that you're more, we know that people who don't breastfeed have more cancer. Maybe by that duct not being used till last, it becomes the one that's more likely to get cancer. So these are the kinds of things that we're learning that unless you study people, you're never going to figure out. The breast is really an amazing organ. It's the only organ we're not born with. Um, all other organs were born with them intact, but the breast, you have a nipple, you have stem cells behind the nipple, and that's it. And then puberty comes, and the hormones start, and then the breast starts to develop. It reminds me of those sponge animals in a capsule, and you put them in water, and they blossom into a dog or a cat. Well, that's sort of what happens with puberty. And then your breast, every month, is at the ready, waiting to see if you're going to get pregnant. No, nah, not this month. And then it goes back down again. Oh, maybe this month. No, not this month. And then finally, when you get pregnant, it turns from... Uh, you know, a, a lady in waiting, so to speak, into a milk producer, and it turns blood into milk. I mean, that's pretty magical. But it takes what's in our blood and turns it into, concentrates things we need in milk, the immune cells and everything else to give to the baby, and it changes the milk over the life of the baby. So a newborn gets a different milk than a nine-month-old. And then at the end of that, you stop breastfeeding, there's massive involution, clean up, and then you make new ducts for the next kid. Do you make them in the same pattern as the old ones? We don't know. Nobody's looked. Um, it could be that there's a tract and you just grow them back, or it could be there's more, C more stem cells behind the nipple to make new ducts. We don't know because we don't study women. We study rats and mice that have one duct. And so it's much easier to control. It's faster. But it doesn't tell us anything about women and breast cancer in women. So. The breast really needs to be studied in women if we're going to figure this out. The other thing we're looking at is, could there be bacteria and viruses in the breast? Now, the reason everybody's hearing about the Human Microbiome Project is because there's new technology. It used to be you took tissue and you grew it in a Petri dish and you got the conditions all right and you had to see if anything would grow. Now what you do is you map all the DNA and RNA you subtract the human DNA and RNA, and you see who's left. So the reason you're seeing all these stories in all the media about the microbiome is because of this new technology. Well, they did a human microbiome project, and they mapped the whole body to see what bacteria we had in our skin, what we had in our colon, in our mouth, and all over, but they didn't do the breast. 
Now, the breast gets sucked on by babies and lovers, and it probably has bacteria and viruses in it, which may be good or they may be bad. We don't know. So we're doing a study now where we're trying to map the microbiome of the breast ducts, what bacteria and viruses are in the fluid. And interestingly, our early data suggests there could be a protective bacteria. So it goes to the fact that breastfeeding is protective. Maybe with breastfeeding, you not only give milk to the baby, but get bacteria back from the baby's mouth that protects your breast so that it doesn't get cancer. I don't know. But this is really the kind of fascinating things that we actually, you think we know everything about the human body? There's so much that we don't know. And we have to study humans to figure it out. Because mice and rats, they don't get breast cancer. They're easy to study, they're cheaper, but they're not good models for really understanding human breast cancer. So we have to understand and we have to study humans.